it's the thought process for me. You know, regardless if you're, it, regard, it, it don't matter how much money you have. Discrimination is discrimination. I say that respectfully, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of your disabled, regardless of your culture, regardless of your age at the end of the day. When you live in a, a, a living, an independent living, temporary situation, and you got a management company, or even you know at the end of the day you have a slumlord, it doesn't matter your living is arrangement at the end of the day, who is behind it. But when you have a company that's behind you at the end of the day, that's supposed to respect you as you give them your money at the end of the day, it should be no reason why it should be a one-sided conversation when it comes to discrimination. I say that respectfully. It's the thought process to me as how the narrative is ran. It should be no reason why it should have to wait for you to experience an experience or your family member to experience an experience, an unhealthy experience to reevaluate your thought process and say to yourself is, this is not right. Understanding a temporary situation, regardless if it's a temporary situation or not at the end of the day, everybody deserves to have a roof over their head and be respected. And I say that respectfully. And especially if an exchange for even exchange is supposed to be someone providing money for that living is arrangement at the end of the day. An even exchange is supposed to be you pay on time, you respect yourself, you respect your environment, and you respect the employees. I'm not understanding what happened to the equal exchange when it comes to the employees respecting the tenants. And why the tenants are being discriminated against because of their culture or their sexual orientation or their disability. That's a problem within a problem at the end of the day. And I say that respectfully. How a, a management company, right, can sit here and label someone because the way they tie their shoe or the way they carry themselves well. And they're just trying to find any and every little thing at the end of the day just to throw a negative narrative on a person of their delusional ass mindset. All because that person does not like the tenant. That's a personal problem at the end of the day. You know, not everybody's the same when it comes to temporary situations and, and living arrangements at the end of the day because you have those tenants who are nasty. You have those tenants who don't clean, keep their household clean or whatever the case may be. But when you come across that one tenant, and it shouldn't matter at the end of the day, but it should. But when you have that tenant who is well kept and groomed and makes sure that they take care of their business at the end of the day, it shouldn't be no reason why you're attacking that tenant. Because you don't have good intentions for yourself because you're miserable. And you see that this tenant speaks up for themselves. But So because the tenant speaks up for themselves and they don't have to exchange words with disrespecting you, they can actually hold a conversation. Something that you're not used to. It'd be that part for me. Because when they finally come across someone that has common sense to not exchange words with toxic words, they don't reevaluate their thought process because they're looking for a reaction for you to come out of character. But when they don't get that character out of you at the end of the day, they antagonize you so bad. Like trying to fix something that needs to be fixed within the apartment when you first moved in. Who does that? Like how do you go back to your management company, right? Regardless if you're a super or a manager, at the end of the day, you still got to report to somebody, right? When you work for a company, you still report to somebody, especially when it's not your establishment. It's that part for me. Okay. You still got to report to somebody. You don't have no type of proper documentation saying that what job you're going to do. All you're going off of is word of mouth. He say, she say. Your, super, your supervisor directed you to do a job. Go and do the job. You go back to your supervisor and acknowledge to your supervisor that there's nothing that needs to be done. And the supervisor's reevaluating their life, saying to themselves is, why is this tenant keep reaching out to me for? Because your, 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 your person with their job description that you gave them on the job, their, their job title, they don't want to do their job. It's the thought process to me. How it's sad and disturbing to see someone disabled and they need bars in a bathroom or they need bars in a apartment. If Regardless of a temporary situation or not, if you acknowledge that someone is disabled at the end of the day, right, and they're providing documentation that they're disabled, it should be no reason why your employees should be saying, ain't nothing wrong with that tenant. They're not disabled. What's wrong with them anyway? That's none of your business. That's discrimination at the end of the day. And then you acknowledge, oh, those, those bars are only for disabled people. 
If your supervisor acknowledged to put the bars somewhere, what are you supposed to be doing? Doing your job. You're talking too much. This is the problem with people today. You're doing too much besides your job. Someone gave you paperwork. Someone gave you word of mouth. Your boss told you to do your job. Why are you not doing your job? And then you go back and tell your boss that you're going to say what you want to say to your boss so you can cover up your narrative at the end of the day. It's the thought process for me. The one-sided conversations. It's sad to see that at the end of the day, regardless if you're elderly, disabled, regardless of your sexual orientation or your culture, nobody should be treated poorly. And it's sad and disgusting to see how a management company, when someone speaks up for themselves and acknowledges that certain things are wrong within the establishment where they rest in their head at. You know, like if it's a water leakage or something in the ceiling or something like that, and they acknowledge it. You know what? You you know what's sad to say? How can how can how can the how can this the, the staff members acknowledge and be like, yo? You can't blame the tenant no more. Oh, got it. You know how that you know how you got those tenants where they be like, I'm gonna blame that tenant for everything or whatever the case may be. When it comes to those employees, I'm gonna just blame them for itself so it won't look like I I I, I didn't do my job and I know I ain't do my job. Oh, I know that I messed up. You know when they can't play those cards no more because things are too visible with them being visible as to why wasn't you not doing your job and then you sit there and blame somebody for not coming in to rescue you to do your job when you wasn't maintaining something so it won't look the way it does right or wrong it's the thought process of me oh, okay or there are holes in the wall and someone has rat infestation mice infestation roaches infestation at the end of the day they move into an apartment Right? Blindsided. And they acknowledge like, yo, there's holes in the wall. Why is your staff members telling the tenant at the end of the day, it's normal to have those holes in the wall? What? And then y'all sit here and manipulate the tenant at the end of the day as to, oh, we got to cover our asses because we're in trouble. It's the thought process for me. You ever walked into a blindsided situation and then as months later at the end of the day, you already saw what the blindsided situation looks like. And before you moved in, you didn't see no pictures of disturbance or nothing, no danger, caution sign, nothing. But as soon as you move in, maybe a good few months later, you see a whole bunch of pictures, how damaging the building is and what needs to be fixed in the building. So y'all knew this was going on and everybody else knew this was going on before the tenant actually moved into the blind side of the situation. That's messed up and jacked up. And then they quick to blame the tenant for bringing the roats and the, and the, and the rats and stuff with them when they moved in. But it'd be the thought process of me. It, this, this is the funny part. If you're one of those tenants, right, you don't move furniture in your apartment, especially when you're in a temporary situation for many of your reasons. Because you're being observed and you're seeing what's going on within the apartment. Where's any mice may be coming from? Where roaches may be coming from? You know, some people don't think like that. But when you're a clean person, you're mindful at the end of the day not to just put furniture in your apartment when you know it's a temporary situation because it's a temporary situation for all the right reasons. Why would you want bugs and rodents living in your furniture? It's the thought process for me. You know, everybody's not on the same frequency when it comes to Vibration, having common sense and respect for themselves. To know at the end of the day, I don't want to sleep with bugs and rats and shit. It's a thought process for me. Or, somebody needs something fixed in the apartment. Why is it taking months and weeks at a time for something to get fixed at the end of the day? Why? And then you're saying you're doing your job. But then doing your job and you're not doing your job. It'd be the thought process for me.
You're lingering around having drinks and smoking and having conversations with everybody else and everybody else's business at the end of the day, but you can't do your job. It be the thought processing. You're worried about what time this person leave out their apartment. You're worried about what time they come back home so you can line them up and psych them out their thought process and their freedom at the end of the day because you ain't got good intentions. But you can't fix something in their apartment, though. You got all different types of workers at the end of the day who just don't know how to have don't know how to have common sense when they actually fill out an application to understand the awareness within awareness what your job description was when you signed up. People get a little bit too comfortable on the job and forget to do their job. It be the thought process of me. And then the first thing you want to throw in somebody's face is you've been on your job for 30 years. Oh, it's a thought process of me. Or then you have those employees um, that like to cite people out their freedom. It's the thought process for me. Then you have the tenants who suffer because of the fact that the building has not been maintained for years at a time. But you have this person who swears they do their job, but they don't know how to maintain something. But they know how to try to control someone else's life, though. Besides maintaining a property and doing their job. It's the thought process of me. It's like you ever saw something before seeing something, but you saw something. Like you know how like when you you know how like just say for instance, you drop your keys on the floor, you know you gotta pick them up. Right? That's like somebody seeing a hole in the wall. Right? Knowing that it's rights and shit coming in and out of it. Nobody has common sense to say, you know what? Let me close it. So people won't get sick. They just let it sit there. And all you smell is fumes of, 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 of rodents. And then when you, see, when you say something, they be like, oh no. It, it's, it's, it's the norm. That's how people get sick. You ever walked into a blindsided situation and knew something wasn't right? Or, you, know, you just knew something was off and you just smelled it like, mm, what's going on here today? Because, you know, roaches have a scent. Mice have a scent. It's a deadly scent. And that scent lasts for a long time. It does. So that means if you have multiple rodents in your apartment... Imagine the high fumes that you're really smelling at the end of the day that's going to cause you to get sick. And then when you speak about it at the end of the day, they say it's the normal. It's the norm of the norm. How are you going to eat your food? You just put your plate down at the end of the day, not realizing you have rodents in your apartment. You go to go eat your food, now you're sick in the hospital. Why? Because a rodent just ran up on your food at the end of the day. And you just ate behind it, and now you're sick. Somebody moved into their apartment, blindsided, was only in their apartment for four months, less than that. Didn't go into their apartment with no furniture, right? Kept asking, can you move the radiator? Can you move the radiator? Can you move the radiator? They didn't want to move the radiator. Why not? Because the radiator, it had holes about this big. Why is that? First of all, somebody just moved in here, Right? They ain't got no furniture at all. They only got one lug. They, they, they only got one luggage. And they luggage is only cleaning supplies. They ain't got nothing else. Ain't nothing else come out that bag. On the radiator. If you know those floor with radiators that have the, that long radiators, the little floor long radiators. Why on each corner of each side of the radiator? The hole is this big. So you mean to tell me in four months that that hole got like that? That big? I'm not even is that that big. It took four months for that hole to connect from one side to wherever wherever it went. In four months, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. It takes them things forever just to make a hole. 
four months. That hole already been there. And they just trying to cover it up. Because if, 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 if that's not the case, right? If somebody just moved in there, that means that apartment's been infested. Right? Something from the other side is just not going to come through and just break the wall like that. To make it that big. It's going to make a hole probably, but not that big. That's a big hole. And then when someone gets sick and someone speaks up for themselves, they say that they say to the tenant that the tenant caused it on themselves. What? They come into the tenant's apartment, start looking around to see, oh, well, it must have been hiding in the radio or something. That's probably where it came from. Or it must have been hiding in a in, in, in water cooler or something. Or it must have been hiding in a shoe or something. Really? It's the thought process for me. <laughs> or when someone goes weeks and months at a time and nobody came to fix the mold in any apartment or something. People get sick from that. It's the thought process for me when it comes to the one-sided conversations and these management companies, these slumlords, these employees don't know how to respect their neighbor. It's the thought process for me. Or somebody just moves in, right? How dare you tell a tenant, regardless of it's temporary or not at the end of the day, it'd be the thought process for me because people pick and choose who they want to antagonize. And I say that respectfully. People pick and choose who they want to label. You'd be really surprised at the end of the day. What they may not do to one person, they're definitely going to do it to the next person. And that's a fact. Just because somebody treat their family member a certain kind of way don't mean they're not going to treat somebody just, just poorly at the end of the day. That's like being in a relationship with somebody, right? Somebody treated you poorly, but then you get into a relationship with somebody respecting you. It's the thought process me. Everybody don't treat everybody the same. And I say that respectfully. It's the thought process to me. Because now people paint this narrative as to, oh, I'm, I don't move like that. That's not the type of person that I am. I, I, I respect my neighbor. I love my neighbor. I wouldn't do that to my neighbor. I always help, help, help. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't lay with my neighbor like that. I wouldn't disrespect them. I, don't, I wouldn't do that. Wow. Because the table's unturned on your ass now? The truth is revealed as to who you truly are? And you ain't have good intentions. It's the thought process to me. Or. This is what I wanted to get to. It's the thought process for me. How judging a book by its cover at the end of the day. How someone from a management company or not at the end of the day will come into someone's home and, uh, st home and say to them that. Yeah, well, somebody understand the temporary situation within a temporary situation. But you don't threaten somebody that they better not damage their stove at the end of the day. You don't know if this person's a clean person or not at the end of the day. It's the thought process of me. The people that you need to be saying that to need to be cleaning their stove right now. It be the thought process for me. Because not everybody's the same. Never judge a book by its cover. And I say that respectfully. It's the thought process for me. It's bigger than culture. It really is. It's, it's, yo, this stuff is so bigger than culture. The discrimination card is so real out here. It's not even funny. It's so real and dis it's disgusting. It's disgusting. When I mean disgusting, it's disgusting. It don't matter about your culture or your religion or your sexual orientation at the end of the day. When they ready to discriminate against you, they're going to choose to pick you and call you out. And it's up to you at the end of the day how to handle the situation. Is either you're going to be aggressive and disrespectful or you're going to handle it mature and understand at the end of the day the reaction that they was looking for, you're not giving it to them. Because that's all they want is a reaction out of you. 
And when they say they can't get that reaction, yo, I swear they do any and everything to pick and nitpick at you. Because everybody else is screaming and cursing them out. But when you're one of those individuals that know how to hold a conversation, let alone speak how you feel, they don't like that. And especially men who don't like a female speaking up for themselves. And I say that respectfully. Because there are men, it doesn't matter what your culture is. Don't matter what your coach is. And I say this respectfully. It's a lot of men that do not like women speaking up for themselves. It's the thought process for me. And when you come across that woman who speaks up for themselves, they quit to paint that narrative as you're crazy, delusional, and all this toxic behavior at the end of the day. All because of the fact that they like, hey, that one right there, speaking up for herself. What happened? Why, because you bully your wife around? You disrespect your wife? Someone's sink is damaged and broken. You're telling them that they have anxiety problems, that they broke it themselves when they didn't. That's how they moved in. It was already like that. If you never moved into a blindsided situation, you would never know what I'm talking about. But if you ever moved into a blindsided situation and you're like, hold on, wait. What? I know I'm not bugging. I ain't psyching myself on my eyesight. No, you saw what you saw when you saw what you saw. Things that are invisible that are starting to become aware. It's the thought process of me. Because now they're trying to figure out how to, how do you know? How do you know I'm lying? It's the thought process for me. When they want to say that they're OSHA certified and all this dumb stuff. So you're OSHA certified. Last I checked, when you have OSHA certifications and stuff, don't you do customer service? Ain't, ain't that part of OSHA? Don't you got to do customer service? I know I ain't bugging. I, maybe I am, but I don't think I'm bugging. Don't you got to do customer service for OSHA? Ain't that part of the course that's all in one to when you go into people's homes and respect them and all that? I think that's part of OSHA, right? I think that's part of OSHA. If I'm not mistaken, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because why? You don't want the, when you're dealing with consumers at the end of the day, you don't want to have a bad report. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That part. <laughs> it's the thought process for me. I don't understand that you show for work, you're on someone else's clock. It's not your clock. It's the thought process for me. Just do your job. And it's sad to see how a lot of these companies play the narrative as they can't do certain things when it comes to fixing up their properties and stuff like that but they never was managing their properties from the beginning though it's the thought process for me because when you know you know and when you have lazy ass workers and you see them and you know you know somebody can be somewhere in an establishment right for years that's like moving into an apartment, right? And you've been in that apartment for five years. That apartment turnover is the same way that you gave it to them. That The same way that they gave it to you. That's the same way you turn it over to them. As is. Nothing more, no, nothing dysfunctional, nothing in that, in that nature. But it's a thought process to me how someone has an establishment and they cannot maintain it. And then when a tenant speak up, the tenant is wrong. It's the thought process for me. Like, the mathing is not mathing. And then y'all quick to label the tenant who speaks up for themselves as crazy, delusional. They got anxiety problems. They need a whole straight body jacket type energy. Like, all because you're trying to cover up your narrative and paint your narrative as you're such a good person. To make your brand look good. It's the thought process for me. It's sad. It really is sad. 
it really is sad. Because people get away with so much and then innocent people have to deal with the impact. That's like saying you decide to go in business for yourself, right? Regardless if you don't know what you're doing or not. And you're dealing with food. Common sense is you have to always keep your establishment clean at all times. Am I right or am I wrong? That's part of your job description. You're supposed to always keep it clean. That's why the health department comes in to make sure at the end of the day everything is, is on point. It's the thought process for me. So when the tenant speaks up for themselves and acknowledge that something is off or something needs to be fixed or a door that they can't get into with their own key at the end of the day, you got over 500 people that just walked past this one door and you mean to tell me that nobody said nothing about the door not working? So you mean to tell me that everybody got to stand outside just for somebody to come outside to open the door for somebody to come open the door? And you have a living super and you have the maintenance people that's coming in and out of the building. And you mean to tell me nobody fixed the door for weeks at a time. Nobody fixed the door, a broken door. You're supposed to put your key in the door and get access to the door at all times. Why should it have to take weeks at a time? For someone with common sense to say, hey, how you doing? I don't know what's going on, but um, why is your, your employees, they going back and forth or whatever case to be opening this door? Why nobody fix the door? they like, oh, didn't have any acknowledgement of it, ma'am, sir. Didn't have any acknowledgement of it. Oh, okay. So this is the problem now. Just like that. So what they're going to be quick to say is, I didn't have any acknowledgement of it when something real happens. So they can cover their ass at the end of the day. So because you didn't have acknowledgement of it, it's okay for your employees to do whatever they want to do. See when nobody's doing it, when somebody else is not doing their job. It's not keeping tabs as to what's going on to maintain what's going on. You see how that work? It's the thought process for me. Because at the end of the day, how nobody not know what's going on? And it's going on over two months now. And the door still wasn't fixed. So you mean to tell me, that no, no coordinators, no case managers who check on a tenant or whatever the case may be to check to see if anybody needs something fixed in their apartments. You mean to tell me that nobody not one time came into the building, not one time, or came to the property, not one time, to check to see what's going on with their property? You sound like a slumlord to me. Because who doesn't check on their property? And then you're quick to play victim at the end of the day. And then you're quick to point the finger. Oh, I'm going to blame this person. I'm going to blame that person. I'm going to blame this person. I'm going to blame that person. No, we're going to blame that person. Why? Because the tenants are speaking up? Because it's unacceptable? So this is what happens. This is the narrative I'm trying to break it down to. Why wait for something to happen to somebody, right? God forbid. Why wait for something to happen to somebody to get hurt, to reevaluate your life and say to say to yourself is, that was a safety hazard. Nobody fixed that door. Now you got to explain yourself. We're waiting. So the first person they're going to go to is a super as to, okay, we, we got acknowledgement from the tenants that this door has been messed up for three months now. So you mean to tell us that you never came to tell us that we needed to come fix a door? Or why didn't you fix it yourself when you know how to fix everything? And why wasn't it not fixed? And why did this happen anyway? How did this possibly have happened? Safety has it. Oh, okay. It's the thought process for me. It's a lot of things that safety has it and it goes overlooked. It's a lot. It's so much to talk about. It really is. How someone goes to turn a water on and they're paying rent. And they can't even get the common courtesy like, hey, your water is not going to be working for a whole week. Wait, what? 
So you mean to tell me I came in and out of this building this whole entire month and I ain't see one note, not one time, saying that there's no water? So then when you speak up for yourself and say something to the management company, they looking at you while looking at you and saying to you is, they reaching out to the management company and reaching out to the, the maintenance department. But then the management company like, yo, what's up? This fool going to say, I ain't got time for that today. We listening. Go ahead. We listening. I didn't think it was that serious. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. If somebody doesn't have water, you don't think it's a big of a deal? We're dealing with consumers. We're dealing with tenants that give us out, give, them the, give us their money. How do you don't think that's important? It doesn't matter what time of the day it is at the end of the day. Somebody should be able to get up and turn their water on when they feel like it. It's the thought process for me. It's not that serious. Why is not that serious? You see the one-sided conversation at the end of the day and then the animosity behind it? It's not that serious. <laughs> but then when you speak up for yourself, you're wrong. You're so wrong. You're wrong with them being wrong for speaking up for yourself. It's the thought process of me. When the communication is one-sided and no respect is there. No respect is there. No respect. How can I respect somebody? How could you respect somebody at the end of the day that don't respect you? But you know how to respect yourself. Not to come out of character at the end of the day. That's the most respect you're going to have for yourself. To ha and understand the awareness within awareness. An even exchange is not going back and forth with somebody who don't got common sense, let alone respect. Because they will sit there and try to psych you out your freedom, your thought process, and your eyes at the end of the day. It be the thought process of me. So, they asking the, the, the person in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the maintenance department, the supervisor, like, yo, what's up? Like, why do you think this is acceptable as to what you're saying to me right now? Because they're mad confused as to why you even saying this to me. Like, are you serious right now? If the tenant doesn't have water, why was it not okay to put no signs up? But you're standing there. Yo, I ain't even gonna say what I'm gonna say. People are just weird. People are really weird. Or you reach out for help, right? From a management company. And because you're reaching out for help and asking certain questions or whatever the case may be, it should be no reason why you reaching out to certain departments and somebody saying they're gonna F you up. And you're trying to, and you're confused with the million confused because you're trying to figure out, hold on, did I raise my voice? What did I say wrong besides good day? And as to, you know, an even exchange, as to a fair exchange, as to, I just need something fixed today. The staff member's on the phone calling a certain department. The phone's on speaker and you hear everything. You hear everything. So, you're not lying. You can't be making this shit up. You can't. You cannot be making it up. So, you're hearing the conversation with the hearing the conversation. And this person on the other side of the phone saying they're going to F that tenant up. Oh, yeah? Why? Because you don't want to do your job? Why you want to beat somebody up because you don't want to do your job and they wasn't disrespectful? They was never disrespectful, disrespectful towards you, no shape or form. Not even a little bit. Dang. It's the thought process for me. Respectfully. Like, ma'am, sir, where they do that at? Nah, for real, where they do that at? But this is the same thing, too. You got people, family members, that have to deal with this type of behavior at the end of the day. And it's the narrative that I got I to gotta put out there because... The same way that person said that she was going to F somebody up. Imagine how many other people that person had said that they was going to F up at the end of the day. And imagine why people have the animosity, why they have towards certain management companies and some certain slumlords at the end of the day. Because the disrespect be mad real. The disrespect be mad real. Especially when you're a good tenant. When you're a good tenant, that energy had different. That energy had different. And I say that respectfully. That energy is different. It's unacceptable. It really is. It's unacceptable. Somebody reaching out for help and you want to fight them? Sound like you're fighting yourself if you want to get technical. 
You're your worst enemy. Hate in disguise, it's the thought process of me because you don't want to do your job. You'd rather catch a case at the end of the day to reevaluate your life because you was bothering an innocent person or because you got controlling issues? It'd be the thought process of me. You'd rather catch a case because you got controlling issues because you don't want to do your job. And it's the thought process of me because now you'll be sitting there reevaluating your thought process in a jail cell and they question you as to, ma'am, sir, why are you here today? And you reevaluating your life, saying to yourself, I hate my job. And I got controlling issues. It's the thought process for me. <laughs> it's sad. It really is sad. Like, these narratives could go many ways. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. But then when they come across the right one at the end of the day, that they saying this stuff to, that, that, that's about that energy... That really, you really want to fight? You really want to fight? They ain't picking their face up. Because they done fucked up. Called out the wrong person. But why does it have to get to that when you started? You antagonize somebody when they trying to get help. How does that work? That's not an even exchange. First of all, that's not part of your job description. If it is, you need to point it out on your own. You need to point it out. It need to be a sign somewhere saying, et cetera, et cetera. I can antagonize the consumer, the, the, the tenant, when I feel like it. And I can threaten their life when I feel like it. They don't say that. It says, good day, tenant. We are a pleasure to have you in our neighborhood. We are happy to service you at anything that you need moving forward, being that you are our new tenant. And regardless of how long you've been here today, we are here to respect you within the community. It's the thought process of me. <laughs> what happened to that? What happened to the respect, yo? Like, what happened to the respect? I understand everybody's a little bit overwhelmed or whatever the case may be, but for real? You that overwhelmed that you shortchanging yourself to psych yourself out your own freedom to show up to a job? And then you complain about a pay. That's shortchanging you at the end of the day. But you only shortchange yourself when you disrespect an innocent person. And I say that respectfully. It's the thought process for me. When the math it ain't math at the end of the day. It's the thought process for me. Or when it comes to the clean environment within the buildings and the clean environments outside. It's the thought process for me. How you got people who live in the building who work for the company, right? Like the super. And then you got the portal who comes in and out of the building or whatever. But nobody knows how to maintain a cleaner building. And then when you speak up for yourself and catch these more efforts in the act, and then they like, oh. So you mean to tell me that you guys didn't mop or pick up a broom in over two months? And then when someone speaks up as to why it's trash in front of their door, you're going to quickly say, oh, well, they put it there. Why? Why they put it there? So you can make yourself sound good at the end of the day. So what happened to the other stuff that's in the hallway? You want to say that that tenant put it there too? It'd be the thought possibly when it comes to one-sided conversations. Like I'm understanding you show up for a job, do your job and go home. All that extra stuff at the end of the day is like, it's, it's, it's really irrelevant. Like, all that buddy, 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 buddy stuff. If you can't multitask, you need to just do one thing and that's your job. And I say that respectfully. If you cannot multitask, you need to do what you came to do. And that's what your check is for. It's for you to do your job. All that extra stuff that you got going on at the end of the day is do, it's, it's doing too much. And the thing about it is, these folks don't like taking accountability for their actions. They like to run, 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 run. What you running for? Be real with yourself at the end of the day. You allow somebody to go into a blind side of situation and this type of behavior, y'all be on. Everybody know who you truly are at the end of the day. Before, it'd be crazy, yo. It, you know it'd be so crazy? Like, everybody be knowing what will what, what be going on before a person actually moves into the establishment at the end of the day. And I say this respectfully. Because... When a person goes into a blind side of situation, and when they start to reevaluate their thought process, they start to handle everything that's going on within the building. This been going on for years. They they they, they caught you slipping. 
And I bet you when you talk up for yourself, they're going to try to blame you. And they, and, they, and they racist. They racist. They racist? What you mean they racist? Like, what? Oh, nah. It's the thought process for me. Because when you know, you know. And it's sad to say that other individuals make it look bad for other people. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that at all. And it's sad. Because some people don't have home training. Some people don't know what it is to be in a clean environment. Not just be in a clean environment, but to respect themselves. So because they had an unfair share hand of people who were not clean people. Who damaged property. Not everybody's like that. It's the thought process for me. Not everybody's like that. So sitting there judging somebody at the end of the day, you're only playing in your own face, and I say that respectfully. It's sad to say that this world that we live in today is like, dang, when it comes to customer service, not all customer service, but when it comes to customer service, it's like it's... It's like a 50-50, it's just like a 50-50 situation out here. It really is. People don't want to do their job. It's crazy. People don't want to do their job. But they want to, they want to, they want to show up to work to get the check, but they don't want to do their job. They can, uh, they can understand the assignment when they get, when they, when they got that little $800, $1,000 check, $1,200 check or whatever case may be. They understand the assignment at the end of the week. They understand it. Or whenever they payday is, they understand it. But what comes with the paycheck, they don't want no parts of it. It's the thought process for me. But in the process of them not doing their job, they only shortchanging the tenants who's actually paying for a roof over their head, to be in a clean environment, to be in a healthy environment. It should be no reason why buildings is, is dirty, outside is filthy. It, it, it doesn't make no sense. It's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Like, why is this the norm of the norm at the end of the day? This should not be the norm. And then people don't understand why they getting sick. Why are you not getting sick? Why do you think you're not getting sick? Because this is why you're getting sick. We have to respect that, yo. People can't respect each other. It's the thought process for me. You know, you got that one group of people who know how to respect their neighbor, and then you have the majority who don't. It's the thought process for me. It's not a crime to respect yourself and respect your neighbor. It's not. And it's not a crime for to have self-awareness to be in a clean environment. It's not that you think you're better than somebody. It's not that, that you think that whatever they paint a narrative as to who they want you to be at the end of the day, that's not what it is. You're supposed to be in a clean environment. You're supposed to. And I say that respectfully. You're supposed to be in a clean environment at all times. And if that's not your norm, at the end of the day, that's a different topic. But the norm of the norm is to be in a clean environment. And I say that respectfully. It should be no reason why a person moves into an establishment or whatever the case may be, temporary situation or not. And they bought furniture and they reevaluating their life as to they gotta throw their furniture away today. Why? You just bought your furniture. Why are you throwing your furniture away already? You only had your furniture in your apartment for how how many weeks? How many months? And you gotta throw it away already? It's brand new furniture. Ain't nothing wrong with your furniture. You ain't have no bed infestation problems with your furniture. Oh, as soon as you put your stuff in the apartment, that's when you had a problem. Why you think people change their furniture every year? That's just crazy to me. You sitting in your couch or whatever, and you got bugs on your couch and shit. Like, what's up? 
You chilling with the roaches. You chilling with the rats. And then you getting sick. And not realizing why you sick. Every time you go to the urgent care or the hospital or the doctor, all they keep telling you is bacteria, 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 bacteria. Bacteria? What's what's going on? The first thing they say to you is, are you in a clean environment? Is it something that you ate? And you ain't been nowhere but in the house. It's the thought process for me. You move into a situation blindside and I know what was going on at the end of the day and then come to find out that a problem was infested. That's messed up. And then to analyze where it was coming from and you see where it's coming from, the hole in the wall, and then the, 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 the management company want to blame you for putting the hole there when it was already there. It's a thought process for me. That's why when you move into certain environments and it's temporary, make sure you document everything from the time you moved in. I don't care if they name change from the company or not because these folks are still responsible. Regardless of the name change or not, they're still responsible. They're still responsible. And especially if these are if they still have the same employees, they're still responsible for whatever lack of work they didn't do, lack of how have you felt behind it and all that. It's the thought process for me. They can manipulate your character all they want. Facts is facts. It's the thought process for me. Always be mindful when you move into a temporary situation, document everything. Take pictures, videos, don't talk on the phone too much. Don't talk on the phone at all. If you need to talk to somebody, talk to them. Talk to them through email. And I say that respectfully. Because what they're going to try to do is paint a narrative as to who you truly not. And to do some verse psychology on your, on your character at the end of the day. Be on the same page. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where... You pay out of pocket for something you ain't got to. Or they discriminate against you and you, got, and you can't prove it. Or they disrespected you and you can't prove it. It's a thought process to me. And I say that respect for you. Always protect yourself. Don't be scared at the end of the day. You're paying for somewhere to stay. And they're treating you poorly. Make sure you document everything. Because you matter. And this is unacceptable. It is. It's, it really is. Like, it really is unacceptable. Like saying somebody, the supervisor from the management company, told the super to come and change the screen in the window. It was a hole in the screen. It's the thought process to me when someone doesn't want to do their job. Why they bring back the? Why the man bring back the screen and told the supervisor that he fixed the screen? And he never fixed the screen. All he did was turn the screen upside down and put it back in the window and the, and the hole was still there. That's fixing the screen. And then you sit here and antagonize someone's character at the end of the day as a description that they truly not at the end of the day to antagonize them. And make them feel like they're not worthy of themselves as they speak up for themselves. And you sitting here manipulating their character. Just because you're trying to protect your job. And when someone comes to fix things in your apartment. And it's incomplete. If they want you to sign something. You write incomplete. If they want you to sign something, yeah, you can sign it, but put incomplete. Don't put the job was complete. Sign it, but say incomplete job done. Incomplete job, not done. So they won't say, oh, well, I, 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 came, to, I came to fix it or whatever the case may be, and I did it. No, you came to do your job, but you didn't do your job. It's incomplete. It's the thought process for me. 
Yo, there's so much I want to say right now. It's so crazy. It really is. But time is only going to tell. Time will only tell. Because God is good. God is so good. And it's sad that innocent people that are elderly, disabled, and regardless of your culture or not, and you in a temporary situation, that nobody should be in these type of environments at the end of the day when it comes to health-wise. Dealing with mold, bug infestation problems, and stuff like that. Like, it's, 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 it's bad. It's really bad. It really is. It's the thought process for me. Because now you got signs. You walk into people's buildings, you got you see signs in buildings. Because road infestation problems, bug infestation problems, people getting sick because of these problems. But you know what? If the building was maintained and when someone moves out of our apartment and it was done properly, not mistreated, they wouldn't have these problems. It's the thought process for me, though. When you come across these slumlords that don't want to do their jobs and then the employees, they act the same way just like the the person who owns the establishment. Like, it's the thought process for me. They act just like the slumlord. Don't want to do their job. With the one-sided narrative at the end of the day. It be the thought process to me. Like if you don't want to do your job at the end of the day. Like for real, for real. Don't clock in. <laughs> it's the thought process to me. Leave innocent people alone. For real, for real. It's the thought process to me. You bringing people pressure up and all that. For what? Having them to have a conversation with you and you ain't even got common sense. Let alone respect yourself to respect your neighbor. It be the thought process to me. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> now you genuine your love respect. I truly appreciate time to the genuine ones only. God said there are better days ahead though. They are. I should preach your time to the genuine ones only. Have a safe day. Have a safe week. Protect your energy. Night, genuine love, respect. <laughs> I go. Get a go. Have a good day. <laughs>